you know, the question I think is not if gold is going to break out, but it's, it's, a, it's a matter of when. Gold historically is performed in what we call super cycles. So in the 1970s, gold was at $35 an ounce. At the end of the, the decade, it was $850 an ounce. Same thing in the 2000s. I think we're at the beginning of an unprecedented new super gold cycle. And when, what that means is you're going to have a decade of growth in the gold sector. And that's, that is really exciting. And if you look at the trajectory of junior mining companies, from discovery to mine production, that's going to take several years. So I'm not worried about these market gyrations in the short term, one or two years. I'm focused on the fundamentals. And, and I keep saying, let's not complicate things. Yeah, the market is doing what it's doing. Currencies are being manipulated uh, by central governments and, 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 and banks around the world. But ultimately, the fundamentals are going to come out. And the fundamentals, again, are uh, debt is at unprecedented levels and supply is ap- rapidly deteriorating around the world. Something's going to get. Welcome to this RTD interview. Today, I'm excited to have first time guest, Mr. George Arzanovic. He's the CEO of St. James Corp, and today he's joining us to share his thoughts on the economy, the precious metal sector, as well as opportunities in the mining space. So, George, welcome to RTD Interviews. Thank you, Michael. Well, I appreciate you taking time to join us here. As I mentioned beforehand, looking forward to finding out more what's going on at St. James Corp. But before we dive into that, I'd like to give the audience a good chance to know a little bit about yourself. So if you don't mind, can you share with us a little bit of your background and how you've arrived at this point in your career? Michael, thank you. Um, I've been in the public markets for about a decade and a half. My first job as a CFO uh, was a little fledgling biotech company in 2005. Uh, we raised $3 million. Um, and I subsequently left the company a few years later just because I didn't want to relocate to the Middle East. That company is called Ormed Pharmaceuticals. It today is a NASDAQ listed company. Michael, I've spent the past decade or so looking for properties in the commodity space, lithium, um, alternative energies, um, co- cobalt, even oil and gas. Uh, but mostly in the past couple of years, I've focused on the gold space. And that's just because I think that's where the market is going to go. Um, I went to Notre Dame 2001, got my MBA there, my professional accountant, finance background, um, CFA. I've actually taught the CFA and that chair was a ML, also a chair of the local university or teaching the MBA program as something I like to do to give back to the next generation of business professionals. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you for sharing that. Definitely looking forward to, uh, you know, getting some of your uh, financial analysis on what's going on. But uh, yes. so right right now, there's a, lots of you know stories that are making uh, head, headlines. Rather, we got, you know, the debt ceiling situation here in the U.S. We got the China Evergrande debacle over there. Debt is the primary issue, it seems, these days. So based upon, you know, your assessment, you're a business leader, a CEO, as well as an investor. You know, what are some things that concern you, perhaps, that uh, would really make gold and, and exposure to mining space, you know, really important these days, in your opinion. You know, Michael, I'm not going to get complicated about this. I think it's very simple. It's economics 101, supply and demand. So you look at, you know, obviously what's happening with the pandemic and the government responses and the unprecedented accumulation of debt. Now we're talking debt, not just at the federal level. So here in Canada, our federal debt has essentially doubled in the past couple of years. That's, that's extraordinary. It's never happened before. But you're not just looking at federal debts around the world. You're talking state, provincial debts, city, municipal debts, corporate debts, uh, off-balance sheet debts, such as pension funds that are underwater around the world. Then you have the small businesses, you know, uh, acquiring lines of credits uh, because maybe they're a restaurant and they couldn't, they had no revenues for a year and a half. Do you, does anybody actually think in very simple terms that governments around the world are going to let interest rates go up uh, significantly, yeah, there might be a couple interest, you know, a couple increases in interest rates here temporarily, but fundamentally, this would be Armageddon if interest rates went up significantly. So there's a lot of being a, a lot of tension on the debt accumulation, but I also look at the supply side as a CEO of a gold company. So Michael, give it a give perspective. In the past ten years, average grades of new discoveries of gold have collapsed about fifty percent. Those discoveries are deeper into the ground. They are in more uh, politically uncertain climates. Um, you know, uh, par- uh, governments around the world that, that have political risk. So if you look at 
demand and supply, it, it's a no brainer. Um, but the last point I would also say is, I think the institutional fund, fund managers around the world really haven't allocated much of their funds to the gold sector. All you need to do, all you need to find is the, the institutional money going into the gold market and you're going to have a proliferation explosion of interest in the gold market. Give an example, the cash on Apple's balance sheet, the cash on Apple's balance sheet is greater than the market capitalization of all gold companies in the world. All right, right. So with that being the case, so debt is clearly the issue there. And so, you know, moving forward, something has to give. You know, you can't have this supply and demand issues continue without something giving. And I'd assume that would be the government liabilities that our, people are holding, expecting to receive in the future. And then to speak on gold even more. So I've seen lots of central banks start to accumulate more. India just, I think that was last week or so, announced a major uh, allocation to their uh, holdings, as well as Palantir, a private publicly traded company, also accepting gold and wanting to receive it for their operations. So the, uh, I'm assuming you see gold becoming more of uh, uh, more in demand these days, but yet you saying the supply is not readily available as it used to be due to, uh, I guess, the lack of capital being invested into it. So at some point, something has to give, basically. And I don't think the market really or the media is really focused on that. Maybe they focus on the debt accumulation around the world. But a key principle here is they are, you know, you, you're not finding gold in, in the same quantity. So these major companies, major producers around the world, the, the new ones, the, uh, the, these companies are not replenishing their gold production. This is, going, this is, this is a crisis in the making. Hmm. Now, it's a crisis in the making. And so in your opinion, what could help solve that? Would it be a revaluation of the actual price of an ounce or, or what do you think? Because a lot of people in the silver and gold community have been very discouraged as of lately because of the lack of uh, movement upward. But all the other commodities are doing extremely well. So I try to encourage people to you know to hold your horses, be patient. We're, a lot of things are you know c- coming to an end right now. But yet one day you'll be rewarded for your patience and holding. And being able to ride these waves. You know, yeah, Michael, you know, I, I tend to not really look at it in, in, in a complicated lens. Just very simple terms. You know, it, you know, the question I think is not if gold is going to break out, but it's it's a, it's a matter of when. As well, gold historically has performed in what we call super cycles. So the 1970s, gold was at $35 an ounce. At the end of the, the decade, it was $850 an ounce. Same thing in the 2000s. I think we're at the beginning of a unprecedented new super gold cycle. And when, what that means is you're going to have a decade of growth in the gold sector. And that is that is really exciting. And if you look at the trajectory of junior mining companies, from discovery to mine production, that's going to take several years. So I'm not worried about these market gyrations in the short term, one or two years. I'm focused on the fundamentals. And, and I keep saying, let's not complicate things. Yeah, the market is doing what it's doing. It's being mean, Currencies are being manipulated uh, by central governments and, 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 and banks around the world. But ultimately, the fundamentals are going to come out. And the fundamentals, again, are uh, debt is at unprecedented levels and supply is ap- rapidly deteriorating around the world. Something's going to give. And that's where I think the opportunity is for these junior miners and gold producers. Interesting. Now, I, I just noticed you have that uh, a picture back there. So I said, sports guy. Give, give, what, yeah. what exactly? What is that? Michael, thank you. So this 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 is an Andy Warhol given to me from a, a business client to mine um, maybe over a decade ago. And I keep it in my office to this day um, because it reminds me of something that I remember Wayne Gretzky's dad speaking to. And that is he told his son, Wayne, and he said, Wayne, don't go where the puck is go to where the puck will be. And I, and I use that as, as far as thinking, well, where do I think the gold market is going to be? I want to go, I want to get in the gold market now because I know where it's going to go. And that's on the ascendancy. That's going to be an explosion of, of, of the demand for the, uh, for the commodity. And that's where I want to be. And that's where I focused my effort in the past year when I joined St. James Gold. Interesting, interesting. Thanks for sharing that. So, so what come to my, what I got from that is that you know don't worry about so much of as to where things are now, the current conditions, because in the long run, you know you want to be where the puck will, will end up at, and we know it's going to be a lot higher price wise. And so, but before I move into St. James Corp to get more information about that, I'm just curious to get your thoughts, you know, being on the mining side of things, because I, I love to ask these questions because you know a lot of people. 
are in a, in a silver camp. And of course, we have some people in, in the gold camp as well. And so the gold to silver ratio has been something that I have always referred to because as of now, today it's 77 to one or something like that. And on the mining side, it's good to say it doesn't come out the ground at 77 to one. And so I, I, so based upon what you're seeing and what you've noticed over the last you know couple of years of you've been in the mining space, is that something that, you know, is uh, it will narrow one day? It, it can no longer it can't stay that way forever. Am I correct or incorrect? Or what are your thoughts? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I look at it from a different lens. You know, gold, uh, gold as, as a hedge, uh, as a tool for diversification. Unbelievable. You know, the, the market beta of gold relative to the overall market is, is zero, basically. So it's a perfect hedge. Um, but gold performs also a little bit differently than silver. There's similarities and there's differences. The similarities, silver and gold are both used as mechanisms for diversification. But silver also has a different component to it. It, it has an industrial application, right? So um, silver we use in our iPhones and so forth. So it has a, a greater correlation towards the greater overall market. So the market appreciates with greater growth. Silver will tend to overperform relative to gold. Uh, of course, there's anomalies and, and so forth, but but that's the slight difference. So I'm not too worried about the ratio of gold and silver because I think they are slightly different um, uh, in a similar space, but slightly different. So again, I don't look at complicated things. I think there's a there's a there's a purpose for gold in one's portfolio and also a purpose for silver in one's portfolio, and I look at them as complementary rather than competing. All right. Sounds good there. So appreciate you for sharing that. So just wanted to, you know, get, get your thoughts on that, but uh, curious to find out more about St. James Gold Corp. So give us some of the, the foundations, work our way up into giving everybody a good, the, the, the macro viewpoint of what you guys have going on there. Michael. So we have, we have projects in the Yukon called the Florin Gold Project, and we have uh, two assets in Newfoundland, which is, uh, I call Canada's newest gold rush. Of course, Canada's original gold rush was the Colonel Klondike Gold Rush, and that's where our, our Florin Gold Project is located. Uh, we have a 2.5 million ounce resource inferred um, based on only 17,000 meters of drilling prior to the season. It was last drilled in 2011. Uh, the project is based on um, geophysical, geochemical, geological evidence. It's open in all directions, both laterally and of depth. That's important because that speaks to the scale and size of the project. Uh, the project itself represents 22,000 acres. It's in the Tatina Gold Belt. The Tatina, the, the Tatina Gold Belt uh, is a, it, it's an extensive um, tombstone intrusive rock complex. It ranges from Alaska where Fort Knox has, uh, where Kinross has his Fort Knox mine. It goes all the way through the Yukon uh, where you have companies such as Victoria Gold, Canada's newest gold mine slated to produce 200 thousand ounces per year for the next 10 years. And you have other properties and companies in that region. That's important because this, we know that these, these, these deposits form in clusters. So you have a cluster in Fort Knox, Victoria Gold, Golden Predator. And of course we're bracketed between Golden Predator and Victoria Gold by about 30 kilometers each way. What's really exciting about this project is that only 80 acres have been drill tested getting to the 2.5 million. But if you look at the target hole struck based on geophysical evidence, what we drill tested, that volume represents less than one tenth of 1% of the overall host rock. Again, that speaks to the size and potential of this project. Our second, um, our second projects, um, our other projects are based in Newfoundland. We're really excited about these projects. Um, they're called the Grub Line, uh, short for Gander River Ultramafic Belt. And we also have the, um, the Quinn Lake property, which is adjacent to Marathon Gold. Of course, Marathon Gold um, has several deposits. In fact, uh, it's the largest deposit in central Newfoundland. So our Newfoundland properties, Grub Line and Quinn Lake, they are adjacent to Newfound Gold and Marathon Gold. And those are the 900 pound elephants in Newfoundland. I also want to really highlight, this is unbelievably exciting for our company, such a uh, early stage company, but we had Dustin Keats. He's the grandson of, of Fred Keats. And that's important because the Keats discovery hole in 2019 is what set in, set in place this explosion of interest for Newfound Gold. Newfound Gold is again, an incredibly successful story. We are adjacent to them. We also are on trend 
towards these new discoveries. So we're really excited to, to really build out these projects um, in the near future. Understandable. So basically, so based upon the area you're in, you're surrounded by a lot of rich deposits that's already in full bloom. So you guys, I guess, are more so the, the newer kids on the block. And so give, give us a little bit about, you know, your future expectations based upon what you know, what's around you and what you currently get, have right now based upon what you're working on. What's the 12, 24 month, you know, uh, time frame of what you guys want to produce? So we, we took a very methodical approach. We're, you know, we're a, we're a small junior exploration company. So we had to be very cognizant of not raising too much money to be dilutive. We want to be really protective of our share price and our current shareholders. Um, we focus on the Yukon just because it's a shortened summer season of drilling. We completed four, almost 4,000 meters of drilling in really half a season. That's extraordinary, especially given the issues of COVID and finding personnel and finding drills. So we have those assays being sent to the lab into Vancouver. We expect results in the next month or so. And we're going to have an update of 43101, hopefully um, with, with exciting news. Our Newfoundland properties now are really 10 to 12 months um, uh, long as far as expiration season. Uh, we already hired Planet X to do preliminary work. In fact, we have pictures of a work expiration that they conducted on our website. It's www.stjamesgold, that's stjamesgold.com. And on our website, you'll see um, news pictures of our exploration program uh, in Newfoundland. So in Newfoundland, what we want to accomplish in the next, uh, next uh, few months is to sign a driller. We've already talking and negotiating uh, to a drilling contract. We want to uh, engage further surveys, samples, and start to put in place a drill program uh, for these properties. All right. Now, you guys are, are currently listed. Can you share with us the ticker symbol and things like that? Yes. Uh, our symbol is L-O-R-D, Lord. We're trading on the Canadian Exchange Frankfurt and, and, and the U.S. Uh, US Exchange. Uh, we just recently uh, received DTC confirmation. That's important because we're looking to build out our investor base uh, throughout North America and beyond. Uh, to that, we're actually going to the New Orleans Conference. We're going to go to the Metals and Mining Conference in London. So we're starting to really also focus on getting our story out um, because we're really excited about what we're trying, what we're accomplishing as a company. Sounds good. Well, George, I thank you for you know sharing insights as to what's going on, man. Sounds like a lot of exciting things there, and definitely looking forward to following the progress there. And hopefully, have you back on next couple of months to see where you guys are at at that point. But uh, once again, uh, are, are you accessible for people to reach out to you perhaps and get more details if they want to speak to you directly or the team or anything like that? Absolutely. So on our website, Gold, we have a plethora of information about our projects, also where you can get hold of us. We have an investor relations team that you can reach out to. And of course, I'd look forward to meeting many of our shareholders at these various conferences as we as we begin to market our company going forward. You know, it's very it's important to note as well that in the past, only in the past couple of months, we raised about $10 million. And it's it was non-dilutive. Uh, we currently have 22 million shares outstanding. That's it. Fully diluted 26 million. That's in contrast to all these other companies that have hundreds of millions of shares outstanding and trading really at pennies. Um, and the reason we have such a tight share structure, I think it's because it, it speaks to the long-term nature of our current shareholders and also to the fact that we've been very methodical in raising capital only enough capital such that we're, we weren't needlessly diluting our shareholder base. It's very easy to take more money when you're trading at 20 cents, but we didn't do that. We had a long-term vision in mind. Uh, and, and so we, we, we took a very patient approach here. And I think it's starting to pay out, pay dividends uh, for our shareholders. All right. Well, George, thank you for once again, joining us here on RTD interviews. Looking forward to following the progress of the project there and definitely have you back on the next couple of months. See where we're at at that point, but thanks for joining us on RTD interviews. Fantastic. Thank you, Michael.